I'd like to call the meeting to order at 627 and a half. According to the select board memo, there are no additions. However, Carl, you want to I wanted to talk to about that bill. The agenda. Yes, there is a bill before the legislature to create, amongst other things, a uniform uh, municipal ethics code. I wanted to see if we wanted to take a stand on any part of that. Yeah. I saw your email or somebody's in there. Yeah. Just a point of order. Um, the guests, whoever came in, please make sure you sign in or sign out as you leave so we have a, a record because not everybody signed it. The member of the select board have to sign? Um, I don't think we have to sign it unless you wanted did. to make this mandatory going. No, no, policy. I was thinking it was just visitors. Okay. In yeah. any case, is that we're, correct? we're all visitors on this planet. That <laughs> Jeez. <our> time. <laughs> Are you going to play philosopher tonight? <laughs> no. All right. Uh, so we do have one addition. That's a bill that Carl's going to talk about. Our representative reached out to us and wondered if we had any comment. Uh, so we got a review of the minutes April 1st. And I have them right here. So one one small thing. Yes. On page two, when we emerged from the executive session on the PM, it says no action was taken. That phrase is used for when we emerge from the executive session and then don't do anything. Uh -huh. But as the minutes reflect, we immediately passed a motion. So that phrase could be removed. Oh, I guess what emerges. So it okay. emerges okay. and yeah. Yeah. Cause, cause yeah. By definition, we never right. take action in the executive yeah, yeah. session. Good. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. Save your little typing. Yeah. All right. Did you do the minutes? I did. Oh, although I'm looking for someone else. Oh, that's usually what happens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. that's too bad. Right. <laughs> yes. I make a motion to accept the minutes with that small with that correction that Carl mentioned for the April first select board meeting. Second. Any further discussion? Is there any further discussion? On page three. Yeah. Under other business, there yeah. would be a statement of the motion. The motion uh, was to appoint John Boucher the second animal control officer. So it should say motion colon to appoint John Boucher the second animal control officer or as second animal control officer. Oh, page three. Page three, page three right there. Here. Uh -huh, right. So okay, right, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. Don't worry, you're not you're not fired yet. Any other corrections, observations? All of the favorites we have. Hi. 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 So I'd agree to have it because we have it. Yes, the April first are approved. Uh public comment. You see a lot of people here, but I guess they're not public. <laughs> um, the next item on the agenda, we're a little bit early. Are the Sibley Farm folks expecting more people? No, me, Ben Hammer from um, the Vermont Land Trust is has been ill, so he's going to speak via Zoom. Okay. He's going to zoom in. Okay, we'll move to that agenda item. Consideration of requests from Sibley Farm regarding historic farm proposed activities. So I remember when I was on the planning commission, we tweaked the the regulations in zone E to allow other activities besides farming or agriculture in the barn, in your barn or any barn in zone E. So now tell us. What I mean, the land trust I saw it, it's back and forth, and I finally emailed them back and I said, I don't know, what's the problem? Well, he just has to get it confirmed because he's not the year. Because confirmed. we're co-holders of yes. the conservation. conservation. I don't understand why we still have, yeah. Could, could we begin by having our guests introduce themselves? Sure. Sure. I'm Jeff Sibley. Bonnie Sibley. Scott Sibley. 
<laughs> okay, so, so so they sent out um Lanta said they could not find an MOU about the um town uh allowing use of the their barn for something besides edible. And we had never executed an MOU without that. But I didn't know that we had to. I mean, uh -huh. we do, we are co holders of the conservation easement. Mm -hmm. So, so what? So now what? That's the word. Kind of thought Mead was going to be. Mead. Yeah. Oh, yeah, right. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> he said we had to have an MOU. I was like, I was not there. I guess in later years, they added that to all of the land trust. Contract. So they added that after you sold it? No, out? not for us, but right. for other people. So, so ours were early, so they don't have that. That's right. So, okay. Hello. Sorry to be a few minutes late and sorry to be joining remotely. I um, had a have a stomach bug still, still ongoing. So um, I'm just taking this from, from home, but um, happy to speak to the land trust involvement here um yes typically in in future um conservation projects the the land trust when we have a, a municipality as a co-holder of a conservation easement we try to work with that municipality to to write an mou of of what activities um the land trust can approve and what activities we need uh the full consultation of the select board to approve under the easement so I was checking to see if if we had ever um, created such an MOU that that might simplify this process. No, we did not. Right. So we I have, think, we did not. I'm not sure we need to. I don't. So you're, saying, you're saying every barn that's on a conserved property, if they want to use it for something, they have to have permission from the land trust and the co holder, which is the town. In this particular instance, I can only speak to this particular instance, but in this particular okay. instance, since we are both co-holders of the conservation yeah. easement, yeah. Um, we we do need to come to some concurrence that um, the activities on that conserved farm are in agreement with the conservation easement. So long as they are, the landowners are free to, you know, to pursue those activities. As far as we're concerned, it is. I mean, we, they, I mean, when I responded to the email, I referenced the zoning regulation that had to do with the use of historic farms in zone E. Okay. That, that's an allowed use in zone E of historic farms, which is what they said. Great. Yeah. And, and under the conservation easement, I mean, the way that we interpret it under the conservation easement is under section three, paragraph 17 which is the right to engage in an accessory use of the property. And, um, you know, so long as that accessory use doesn't impact the, the conservation values, in this case, conservation values would be agricultural and forestry values, um, which these proposed activities, you know, will not have an impact on. Um, we see it as being consistent with the conservation easement and are, are you know, happy to approve it. We just want to make sure that the select board has has a say in that and is, you know, concurring in that opinion. If so, um, I'm happy to draft an approval letter and, and CC or include the select board um, for the Sibleys. That sounds good to me. I mean, as long as everyone else on the select board understands what's going on and uh, concurring with that. Do we have a copy of the uh, conservation agreement? It's recorded. Yeah. Okay. So we can review that. Yeah. Anybody can review it who wants to. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I know that um, it's in line with our zoning regulations, which mm -hmm. is the biggest thing that I was, uh, mm -hmm. you know, looking at. Yeah. Uh, but as far as the land trust goes and having MOU, I wasn't conscious that that was something that had to happen. I mean, I'm, I'm hesitant to set a precedent, if they're setting a precedent, that we have to sign an MOU for any given use of a barn just because it's in conserved use as yeah. long as it's consistent with our regulations. I mean, it seems to me if it's, it's, if it's consistent with our zoning, then right. it should be allowed to do it regardless of- Right, I know what they're saying, that, that that their conservation easement overlays our zoning regulation. Yeah. yeah. So, but being 
somewhat uh, hesitant to start the precedent of having an MOU every time somebody that has a conserved barn mm -hmm. wants to do something with it besides agriculture. Yeah. I mean, I'm not. Yeah, I I not on board with that concept. Yeah, and I will say, since we're talking about conflict of interest a little later on in the meeting, that uh, that I have a preserved barn that uh, VLT and the town hold uh, development rights to. Yeah, I don't know if they do on mine, because mine was one of the first barns that they did. Okay. First barns, and the conservation easements were a lot different okay. than on the first property. Okay, yeah, I don't but, know. But I farm, so it's like... Yeah, I don't I don't know what this, yeah, this clause is that, uh, that Mr. Benhammer is referring to, and whether it's yeah. an equivalent one exists in my... Yeah, mine or not. Most most of our easements do have this this um, accessory use clause. And and just to clarify, the MOU is only regards regarding who um, who takes the lead in stewarding the conservation easement, as in who monitors the property on an annual basis. Usually, we write an MOU with the town that says that Vermont Land Trust will take the lead in monitoring. Will involve right. the town if there's any issues that need right. the town's involvement. That's that's the only scope of the MOU. It doesn't have okay. to do with uh, actual enforcement or or activities that go on on the easement. Right. I know that the land trust does inspect property that's conserved on an annual basis. I'm familiar with that. Yep. Uh, that's about all I know. So I think we're good. Okay. Well, I will. I will send a draft of of the approval letter for your files, and if you have any comments, you can get those back to me, and then I can provide them. Provide that to the Sibleys. Mr. Sibley, has something to say? I just uh, brought these pictures. I don't know if everybody's familiar with the, with the farm or not, but uh, it's a small one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a small one. It's a small one. <laughs> well, you know, I'm I'm, I'm hoping they like make some use of it. Simply no. A lot of these times fall down because they can't afford it. Yeah. Okay, so that sounds like we can uh, move on because you're going to send us a letter. Yep, I'll, I'll send you the draft approval letter. I'll probably put it in your email okay. box tomorrow. Okay, well, thank you. And go back to being sick because we don't want to. On your yeah, phone. yeah. <laughs> I didn't want to share. Okay, well, very good. We appreciate that. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. All set. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for being. Thanks for coming in. The second time I've seen you here in the last fifteen years. <laughs> but uh, we love that controversial stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Have a good evening. Thank you. Enjoy the enjoy the sunshine. You get permission. Okay. The next item is discussion on village center traffic demonstration study. Adam Stanforth, CVRPC, PAC, town representative. That's a lot of letters. Yeah. <laughs> you um, folks doing this? Yes. You're the folks that we're yes, talking about? Here? Oh, hi, Adam. Uh, and um, I just joined the transportation project. Mm -hmm. Oh. And I have one building. Oh. Oh. Um, and CVRPC is what it's doing. Thank you. So uh, this challenge here, uh, I think, okay. How do you look at the You all oh. need a copy? Um, so, um, he said to the group in the one meeting I went to to uh, give him some ideas for what would be a good way to do it. And then I think we have a plan for what the next one should be. So, that's what I'm going to do. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, yeah. We have structure. We have we have the money, but it's not it, it's not currently assigned. So we have some spare capacity to do our right. best. Gotcha. Yeah, but they have. I guess what I was going to finish the sentence was they have money for for ideas for planning. Yeah. You know, moving okay. forward for things. Okay. Um, so um, uh, a long time I've been discussing um, ideas about with people, neighbors, and stuff about safety in the village area. Yeah. Um. Because uh. And since it's a state highway, that sort of creates roadblocks for the town. We talked about the town and stuff. So I said, hey, is there anything you can look at like this? And he said, yeah, that sounds like a great idea. Oh, um, okay. So I will let him discuss that. Uh, so if you look at the draft project definition, again, it's draft. So this is, you know, this is the type of thing where um, if the town decides to proceed with this, we can have a conversation about exact extents uh, for this 
uh, a study is uh, it would be a demonstration project, and that yeah. would and then that would be used to um, collect uh, primarily speed data, both before and during, so okay. that we can we can have some point of comparison, right? Right. Do people yeah. are people averaging yeah thirty seven point yeah. nine yeah, right. without the treatment and twenty eight point eight with it or you know, that type of thing? Yeah. Um, so you so, have data before and after, basically. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, and then. Your second, the second page here is program details. So you've got yeah. just the flow chart there, which is basic process. Yeah. Uh, how we would proceed if the town decided that it wanted to. Uh, we need to have. Uh, normally, you can you, you can have any number of potential sponsors since it's done directly. You would send CBRPC a letter saying, "We, you know, we want to retain you." Which would be me uh, to do some some uh, draft design work. You can see some examples of, of uh, draft designs and project examples on the next couple pages. Uh, I would knock a couple of ideas together, come hash them out with you. Okay. We would go talk to B trans, uh, get a thumbs up or a thumbs down or a hey, can you make some modifications and come back to us. Mm -hmm. And then depending on complexity and duration, we either go straight to the section 1111 permit, um, or we would have to do a little bit more, which you see the you know, complex long duration projects, which would be a little more in depth of a technical review. So some estimation on, on what we expect uh, the impacts to be, or, or just making sure we're not bottlenecking or, or creating some kind of potential uh, safety issue, right? Uh, and uh, then after that, it would be a matter of uh, getting uh, getting some materials and, and uh, getting things set up, whether it's, um, you know, it's uh, flex posts, chalk paint, uh, cones, you know, and, and depending on project duration, uh, that, will, that will inform some of those materials decisions. Um, and additionally, uh, and this is something we're we're figuring out on our end, but um, we probably have, and and we're looking to to um, acquire some materials as an organization ourselves, so that we can go out and partner with our towns, and you know have that have those available, right? So that we can we can run a demonstration project for you this summer, and a demonstration project for Marchfield in the fall, you know mm -hmm. that type of thing. Mm -hmm. um, so that's. That's kind of roughly the process and overview of how this would all work. So, what is this cost of town? That would need to be that. That would be something that would need to be figured out as part of the process, right? There, there would right. be a, there would be an estimate for that. Yeah. Um, I mean, so the design, um, any design work that I'm doing is coming out of, of our agency budget, right? We have the yeah. we have the budget in there already to do it. Yeah. Um, in terms of in terms of any of the other pieces, um, it would come down to materials and uh, potentially labor for installation. Um, though they do, I believe, encourage you to find volunteer labor if you can. Oh boy! <laughs> right on route two. <laughs> sure. Um, well, we're not talking about major money here. No, you're not. You're not. You're not putting in concrete or anything. Yeah. You know, you're not. You're not milling. You're not milling down the surface. It's, it's all like yeah. rubber mats. Seasonal, temporary. So, yeah, rubber, rubber mats, rubber dirt, okay. flex posts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's worth a conversation. It's not so well worth the initial. I'd want to see it. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. estimate. No, of course. So, so the first stage of the project is to say yes, we'll do it. Yeah, or yes, we're interested. Yes, here's our formal letter. Yeah, Chris. Okay, knock together. Some, okay, some proposals. Yeah, knock together some proposals. We figure out some okay. material costs and uh, proceed from there and have that conversation from there. Okay. Right. What do you think? What's the downside? Are we committing to anything besides looking at your proposals? No, you, yeah. you, yeah, you just send, you okay, it's proposal. Yeah, you send a you send a letter. You send a letter of interest. You say, hey, can you mm -hmm. do we like, need can, you mock, can you mock a couple of things on both to consider and have a conversation about, right? Yes. And then if you right, then if you want to proceed from there, we have that conversation. Right. Then we start talking to the state after that. Yeah, about getting the permits to actually put something in. 
I, I'll make a motion to. Oh, you have a question? Sure. Is there um any reason that it's specific, or is there any reason that the traffic plumbing demonstration project can be used in other areas recently or as well, or is the village the only area that your agency determined that? Oh no, this is this was this was in response to an ask from from Adam. So right. Um, I'm, and I, I, one of yeah. our our, our uh, technical advisory committee <laughs> meetings, I put out that we had funding, we had spare funding capacity. Please bring me project right. ideas. There was, you know, there's there's some things that the state isn't doing this year, but there's money in the pot. Right. Bring me things for us to do for you. Yeah. On a side note, anybody can, I think I said anybody, can, any citizen can propose yeah. a demonstration project. But we've had an issue. So. Center yeah. Road. Oh, Center yeah. Road would be a good. That's what I was saying. Yeah, I was thinking about maybe asking about Center Road or the County Road. Oh. Because we were county you're road. talking about traffic calming there. Yeah, the county Road is three miles of problem. Three point, well. Well, this, this also has to do with pedestrians to the border. Right. Yeah. And right. then pedestrians aren't that many on County Road. No, that's true. Most have been killed in the other yeah. well, <laughs> but, but this is a constant problem here. Down, but, downhill and Gallison Hill uh, are of interest as well. But but for people walking, I don't, I've never seen anybody walking. Because yeah. they can't. But, yeah. Yeah. It, it, yeah it, it is an issue for those of you that do not ride bikes. Um, How do you know I don't? Are you being pointed? <laughs> I'm going out on a limb. Uh, it's it could get it could get a little funky riding from you know from Horn of the Moon yeah up to Maple Corner, which I have done many 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 times yeah because there's a lot of speed there. You, you have to be very conscious of. But on a percentage basis, there's a lot more people out there. No, no doubt. That's awesome. Yeah. So yeah. Be before we formulate a motion, I'd like to. Um, make sure we get some language about the motivation for doing this into the motion. So the motivation would be to uh, design a traffic calming demonstration project for the purpose of assessing what measures might lead to increased safety in the village, Tra traffic safety in the village, something along those it's lines. like they were talking about speed. Yeah, I mean, speed is, you know, it's the, generally the, generally that's your, yeah. I mean, that's your number one determinant of safety, generally, when right. you're talking about being hit by yeah. a car, right? right. By yeah, yeah. 35 versus we don't, 20. We don't care about speed per se, I don't think. I think we care about speed as it affects safety. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, and the, the, yeah, I mean, the, the primary, the primary effect though, of most of the, most of the available interventions mm -hmm. is going to be um, to modify uh, the, the, Geometry of the cartway right. in such a way that it signals right. to drivers to slow down, right? right? Because you have the signage right now, but I mean, you, you do have the geometry of a speedway coming into the yes, coming into the village right now, you know, yeah, and yeah. that is part of the problem. You you take a miss that line. <laughs> For the cows <laughs> talking <laughs> road. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. So, okay. you, so I, I'd like to make a motion. To wait a minute. Make a motion. Okay. <laughs> okay. I just want to. I'm, I'm just not clear. So hypothetically, if we were to create a letter of interest for you, would it be possible to include other areas for your? Um, so it'd be. Yeah, I I think that it's tough because I would need to look at how much overall interest and how much capacity there is that we actually have uh -huh. right like one site is very busy um the thing to remember is that this is on a site-by-site -site basis so for each site it's going to be the same process of develop develop intervention yeah. proposals go to the state get the state's blessing go through that process uh -huh. right and so it's not that that can't be done um the the only reservation that I have is over committing to one of the 23 towns that we serve. Okay. Can we decide with one, which is the yes. worst one? Right there. Yeah. I'm just curious. That's the most amount of traffic. It's what how many cars a day go through there? Six thousand to me? It's it's a lot. Right. What's that? It's around sixteen thousand. Yeah, it's also sixteen thousand a day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. The major fifteen thousand. Yeah, they count them when we're doing the bridge over. Mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Right around sixteen thousand. That's a lot more than North Street. <laughs> 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 
She and I walk the Fox Market House first day. I warned her before walking through there. Don't yeah. trust. Because right. yeah. I've almost been killed there yeah. a few times. Right. This out of the line. Fire truck. In my car or not. Yeah. Because yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. that's the whole knowledge too. Okay. Let's say there's a motion so we move on. So I understand that we need a, a letter of interest yes. to the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission. Is that correct? Yes. So I move to authorize the chair to sign a letter of interest to the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission to create designs for a traffic calming demonstration project in East Montpelier Village for the purpose of achieving greater traffic safety, traffic and pedestrian safety. So how's that? How about the safety? Just safety. <laughs> okay. Greater safety. Yeah. Very good. I'd be happy to second that. No, you're second. Yeah. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 That's great to have you do that. Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> Thank okay. you. Thanks very much, guys. Yeah. 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 Appreciate it. Great. Yeah. And Adam, yeah. thanks for stepping up for the, yeah. the task position. We appreciate that. Yeah. Seriously. Okay. Yep. We'll okay. see you again. We're not, uh, kicking, we're not kicking you out. I know. We are kicking you out. I'm going to override the chair on that. Okay. Um, the next item consideration of local emergency management plan LEMP. So, what are we doing about that? I see the plan. I see something. Here. Is this the plan? Mm -hmm. This is the old plan or a new plan? This is the plan for this year. Okay. This is the updated plan. Which okay. Was basically, the only change from last year to this year is updating contact information yep. for a fire department, including town office. Okay. Yeah. So this is mostly contact information. So I have asked that my phone number be changed on um, town documents to 802-441-3337. What is that number, 802-441-3337? Okay. Thank you. So that change will need to be made, but this document is due on May 1st to the state. Okay. Thank you. Um, that's page six, so we can we can still sign it on page. Well, where we do we sign? sign we, we don't sign the actual sign one. separate There's document. A yeah, adoption yeah. document. So I like it. Yes, we got some information. Contact information. That's primarily what the document is. Who's going to have the information? Yeah, yeah. posted on the website. Is, is this posted on the website it, when it's it posted for the meeting? There's not really a specific page dedicated to this on the website. It gets sent to the state. That's really its main purpose. And this is something that our emergency preparedness committee will be helping us to flesh out in more detail in the future. Correct. They've been they've been working on um, a plan. I mean, I went to one meeting that okay. they had to go to, yeah. and it was pretty good actually. They. Um, Kobe was the main uh, speaker there. He's the coordinator, but we haven't really seen much of him in East Montpelier's emergencies. Uh -huh. So I think well, that- Technically the coordinator's responsibility is to help you build the plan. Yeah. The emergency management director, Maybe. which is you and Carl, the right. EMD and EMD2 are the ones that actually execute on the plan in the yeah. event of an emergency. So that is pretty weak right now. Uh, who gets notified and what happens. Mm -hmm. So we need to come up with a better plan and hopefully that will be. We don't have much of a plan. It's like, yeah. is there somebody going to be down here updating on the website, the ropes, for instance, road closures. The last time we had road closures, we didn't have it. We didn't have much at all. We don't have we, a plan in place at all. And right. we can say that going through a flood. Yeah. Yeah. So that needs to be better. And then on the electrical side, on the Washington Electric Co-op, they haven't really reached out very well as far as saying, you know, power's going to be back on at a certain time, mm -hmm. power's out here, power's blah, blah, blah. It's, so, it's frustrating. Well, moving forward, we have to have that. Yeah. That's all I can say. Yeah. It's not very good. So anyway, 
this is this is mostly that goes to pay contact information good thing but just start just saying okay so we find probably need a motion for that yeah yeah i move to accept the to approve the total emergency management plan as amended what did I do? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They authorize us, chair, to sign it. And I authorize, and I move to. And yeah. the time. Authorize the select board chair to sign it. And and actually the road commissioner as well. Yeah. And the yeah. as well. Are you up for the responsibility of signing? I am. Well, you're, you're, you're you have the. I can take it. Yes. Okay. There's a version there in your stack set with okay. the warrant that is for signing. Okay. So I second that motion. that motion. You seconded it. Yeah. Any further discussion? No, sir. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. The ayes are have the two halves. <clears throat> okay. I'll just make sure that you can get the sign. So Gina is supposed to sign it, and I'm just to sign it. So, okay. I am signing it because in order to sign this document, you had to have taken a FEMA course on incident response. Okay. And I have taken that course and I'm okay. certified to okay. sign that document. Okay, so we'll make sure I sign it. For you. Um, okay, the next thing that we have is consideration of energy committee statement. And then the calls online, so. Okay, all right. I thought- okay. Okay. Yeah. So the uh, the motivation for this was um, that the energy committee felt like it didn't really have a clear statement of charge from the select board uh, in terms of what the scope of its work should be. And so we uh, collectively developed a draft <laughs> statement uh, of, of charge that you could consider as the select board charging us with, you know, or of course you could modify it or completely rewrite it or throw it away or whatever you'd like to do with it. But that's uh, that's the motivation. Thank you for doing this. Yeah, I, pl I applaud your effort here. It, uh, it covers a lot of things. Uh, are are you comfortable with its breadth right now? Uh, what 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 are you focusing on immediately? I, I assume you're focusing on the the second bullet point right now, complying with Act One Seventy Four. Um. Yeah, that's right. That that is the the most immediate action is to try to get us uh, this enhance the substantial deference to the enhanced energy plan. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, we've also been engaged with the um, municipal energy resilience. A program to arrange for energy audits for the town municipal building and for the town garage. Um, so it's yeah, you know, we haven't been exclusively focusing on the enhanced energy plan, but that certainly is our our most uh, important near term goal. Okay. But I guess I should say that I mean this this statement was drafted uh, by consensus of all the members of the energy committee. So everyone on the committee is comfortable with the breadth of the statement. Mm -hmm. um, with the understanding that we're not going to accomplish everything in the next three months, right? But this right. is sort of what we should be working on. Right. Okay. And you're aware that the town garage might might not be there in its current form for much longer. Well, the, the, the reason for getting the energy audit is that we might be able to get some money to, um, you know, instead of improving the current garage, we might be able to get money that could be put toward improving a new garage. So okay. We like that's that. Yeah. That taking place yeah. right and one of our members andy shapiro has been like actively engaged in conversations with i'm not sure exactly who but the, the folks on the town garage uh design project yeah, he's yeah. he's involved yeah that's right oh, yes i make a motion to accept the proposed charge for the energy committee do we have that do we have, do we should, have should we have an, i think we yeah of course yeah, all second okay if Carl didn't say you don't you don't trust you don't, you don't trust me even then. <laughs> you made the most I, I don't trust your name. <laughs> wow. I haven't known you. Come on, Tom, back me up on this. <laughs> Why don't you do that? <laughs> Does he sit to my left? Oh, okay. <laughs> your left. I didn't think that's that my far left. left. <laughs> I'm not uh, as far left. Okay, so we have a motion. Any further discussion? 
All in favor, please say aye. 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 They do have it. <clears throat> Thank you, Ben. Thanks, Ben. Thank you for tuning in and Thanks. writing up your plan. A uh, statement. Appointment. Rec Board Stephanie Miner. Huh. Oh, hardly. Oh, it's misspelled. Sounds good. Anybody have any comments? Looks like she wants to volunteer. We should run it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Does she have to have a background check to become <laughs> right? Just uh, is is there an actual board, or is there There's just a, a committee? Board, yeah. yeah, no, direct yeah. board. Yeah. The rec board. Yes. So they're board members, not just members of the rec committee. We we appoint them. We regulate them. Yeah, I understand. It's so she's becoming. You asked about background checks. I was just I didn't hear an answer from something. Background check. Yeah. Oh, no. To I, to work with kids, you need yeah, a oh, sure. background yeah. check. I think. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Sorry, I'm the vice chair on the rec. Oh, oh or, for, then, I don't believe as rec. So yeah. any time we sponsor a team if you're involved with the kids directly yes you have background checks but i don't think the committee the, the board members have oh, okay yeah, yeah. i've heard about it before talking about like, what it about. Well, okay i think tom, i think tom made a motion to to appoint tom. stephanie minor i'll second it okay any further discussion all in favor please say aye aye all right they do have it take care of that thank you Oh, consideration of liquor, tobacco, licenses. If I may speak, it's the year end, so they have to renew all of their licensing again. Mm -hmm. The only new one is the one for um, Mark Fontaine at Traditions. He's, yeah. re he's requesting a second class liquor license. Which means what second he can class? sell. He can sell beer and wine. For off sale? For consum consumption off premises? Off premises. Yes. Finally, it's basically the way this works if we have objections. We don't have any objections. Rosie goes and does so finishes it up. That's correct. You authorized me to. You authorized me to. Yes. Uh, I don't issue. I I approve the license on and behalf of the town. That goes to the DLC. I make a motion to accept Montaigne, Douglas, and Fox Market. No, to vote for, for Rosie. For to Rosie to do what she's got to do. Exactly. <laughs> to uh, authorize the town clerk to approve the liquor and tobacco license. I don't think she approved it. Though. On behalf of the town? On behalf the, of the town. Yeah. Oh, on behalf of the town. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. The motion is to allow Carl to make the motion. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to put you down for making the motion. Make it feel better. Yeah. Oh, and Zoe's going to second. Is there further discussion? All the favor? Aye. 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 Got it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. The next item is the WEC annual meeting voting authorization. And I did not get time to see all the candidates. Uh, May I have before? Speak yeah. That? Yeah. yeah. So, oh, here we go. Yeah. So, I mean, we, we as individual select board members might choose to make a different choice, but for me, as um, figuring out how the town will cast its single vote is a fairly simple question. Uh, are there East Montpelier residents who are running? Uh, yes, there are three of them. Are there, how many positions are there? There are three. Uh, are the East Montpelier residents uh, disqualified in any way? Uh, no, they're, I know them all. They're, they're all highly qualified for the position. I think they do an excellent job. And so for purely parochial reasons, I, I would suggest that we vote for those three. That would be uh, Steve Knowlton, who's current serving President of the board, Ian Buchanan, 
and Olivia Campbell Anderson. She's new, right? Uh, Ian and Olivia are have not served on the board before. Right. But Olivia used to be the director of Renewable Energy Vermont, and uh, Ian is a small business owner in a sort of renewable energy field. I'll second Paul's uh, motion to vote for those three individuals. Was there a direct motion or were we just? Yeah, Carl made a motion. Yeah, yeah. I made the motion mm -hmm. that we approve the three candidates from East Pumpkin. Not a bad thought. Yeah. No, I'll put it the heck? Go the dark the board. I even, I, I even think it's a good one. You do? A good suggestion rather than not, not a bad one. I think, it's a, I think it's I think it's good. Oh, uh, any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 So it's great to have to do that. All right. Uh, you can update for our, you can update for the problem of the update. Okay. So I wasn't at the meeting. Uh, I did hear some discussion about the Navy, which I'm mm -hmm. kind of against. So I've had to talk to a few people about what Alex is wanting to do, which is fairly minor. It's the big scheme of things. Mm -hmm. They want to change the notice and some things around that issue. Um, the review, mandatory three year review, they want to change that. And also the year, the notice period. Um, so I don't know much else besides that. But I had some communication with Ann. Okay. Yep. And, um, Basically, um, what I had suggested is somebody from our select board and, and somebody from the fire department just get together and make sure everybody's on the same page. And then it goes back to everybody to look at and approve or disapprove or whatever. To me, that's what makes the most sense. Well, before what happened when Cal came in before, you guys didn't have any input. Zero, as far as I know. And I know the fire department didn't have any input. And it basically came in at a meeting and it was a done deal. And I don't think that's the way you should come back to this. Well, we've had joint meetings with CALS and discuss changes. That's not always the way it's gone. They haven't just brought the changes and we just rubber stamped them. We had joint meetings. Yeah. Right. And that's fine with me. I don't mind having joint. I mean, I don't think what they're, I mean, a joint meeting with CALS to figure out what they're doing. Then we had a joint meeting with everybody. And once we understood what they wanted. Right. And what I'm saying is if all three entities get together, uh -huh. <clears throat> well, I'm not everybody comes up with the same language, uh -huh. yep. and then go back and everybody discusses it individually and then have a joint meeting and they either kick it out, throw it out, whatever, or approve it. I just think it's easier with all three entities and all three people should be involved in the discussion how that language plays out. That's the way you should do business in any kind of in my opinion. So you're saying that we have a representative from each board get together with right. a representative, three representatives get together and they, they talk about it all and then they bring that back to the boards and then the boards get together. Right. Huh. That's the one way. I remember <clears throat> the meeting before this last meeting, I think it was two meetings ago. My understanding was there was a proposal that Callis and East Montpelier would separately look at the language during our own separate meetings, talk about it as a group, as a select board, come up with our own proposal to modify it, and then bring that to the boards. Or I think it might have even just been to bring that to the next fire department meeting. So everyone's bringing their clarified ideas together, uh, which would be all three entities. Well, right now, right now, Callus is the one that's instigating the changes, right? right. So we we don't have any. We're we're not thinking about making changes right now. Just that. So they, right, but basically, what Ann wants to do from her presentation with me 
just to clarify, because there are places in that contract where it contradicts itself. Right. And I used to work with Ann when I was a lobbyist and she was in the legislature. Um, so we worked together well. And so you, you'd be representing the fire department? No. So, so that's that's my problem with you, is who are you represent? I'm only representing, so when I'm representing this board, I only represent mm -hmm. the interests of the town of East Montpelier. Mm -hmm. I'm not representing EMFD at all. And, I don't know how you can and, separate that. Well, I mean, you're, I, there's a conflict of interest, I think. That was right where it looks I, to me. A conflict of interest to me is if I'm gaining financially, which I would not be. Oh, period. That's so, you know, if you don't like what the three of us come up with, you just say, we don't like it. Like I said, I just think it's too cumbersome and nobody really having any dialogue. And it doesn't have to be me, but it needs to be somebody that can actually sit down and look at that language and be objective. Yes, so I see the benefits of having a small group of people talk and refine ideas. Um, and um, I also share your discomfort with the, the two chairs that you're sitting on, Tommy, whether it's an official conflict of interest or not, it is two different chairs. Um, and I would like to, uh, yeah, I, I don't think we need to be sitting together as three full boards hashing out details. Um, but we could have a communication uh, from Callis. Callis could send us some ideas. We can take a look at them and then appoint one member of the select board to go and be part of a three-person conversation. I'm, I'm comfortable with that. But we, we I, I'd like to see what they want to change. Yeah. I, I'd like yeah. to clarify, because I'm confident they don't actually want to change the meaning of the contract. Not at all. From what I'm under, yeah, my understanding was that they did find contradictions within the document mm -hmm. that didn't make it any sense with themselves. And from what I understood from what Ann was saying, they don't want to change the essence. No, no, I get But that. they just want to clarify the language so it doesn't contradict itself anymore. If that makes sense. I don't think that they want to change the yeah, no, time frame. Yeah. Contract. yeah. <laughs> I think they need to send it over to us and we need to look at it personally and then we'll go from there. Yeah. I mean, we can look at it. I mean, what the heck? They yeah. Yeah. A piece of paper that has yeah. the things written on it. It's like, okay, you want to change this clause, that clause, that clause. Okay. Whatever. Right. That makes sense. Yeah, it's not a big deal. If, we're, if we were thinking about negotiating a completely different contract here, yes. Right. But because it's... And, and that's where I don't see where you would have a problem with me sitting down and just clarifying the freaking language because I'm not, we're not changing the meaning of the contract. At I, all, I think, I think they need to send us yeah. their changes. Their yeah, that sounds we good. would, yeah. but all yeah. three of us would agree on it before we did that. That's, that's, that was the essence. So everybody is uh, on the same day. I, I think that if the East Montpelier representative is in a three-person group to discuss the contract, they need to have a charge from the select board right. as to what the select board wants. And right. uh, we don't want to change anything. As, right as you say, I don't, mean, so if Callis wants, wants to clarify the contract so that it makes sense. If Callis wants to propose some language that improves right. the uh, contract, sure, let's look at that and we can exactly. improve it. And I think we can look at it as a board. Yeah. All they got to do is they're having a meeting about it right now. Come to some agreement among the three of them or five of them, whatever's there, and send us over their changes. And then we can decide after that. Yeah. Yeah. What we want to do. That's what I think. It's not complicated. I mean, it might be very minor. Who knows? Yeah. Yeah. So that's, we can communicate that to Callus. Yeah. Right. Okay. So we want our town administrator to send off something to the East Cal the Callis Black Board Chair that says, please forward your proposed changes to us as a select board. I would think that'd be something we'd want. Yeah. 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 Okay. So the next thing on our agenda is July 2023 storm update. FEMA update. I think that's something our town administrator probably fill us in on. Uh, where is my memo or something here? 
We're well, all listed on the. Uh, What's that? Oh, I have it here. Well, she's right here. So what's the theme update? So I've provided you with the list of all the projects that the town has. Um, and they have provided you a schedule in the documents for the meeting with what projects have been submitted for reimbursement that are completed. Um, emergency protective measures um, is essentially the either temporary work or work done and an emergency basis during the storm. So it's primarily Horn of the Moon, temporary work at Sparrow Farm and temporary work at Sodom Pond Road. Um, Jacobs Road work, Road One, which includes a whole host of roads um, that you'll see on the list in the select board memo. Muddy Brook Road, those four projects are complete and have been submitted to FEMA for reimbursement. Road Group Two, um, is a project that is not yet complete. However, an estimate has been provided to FEMA and received some photos today from the road foreman that I will send to FEMA. And they will perform a uh, uh, what they call kind of a tabletop review um, of um, of the, did I forget to print all this out? For yeah. Oh, sorry. Um, it's, it's been a busy few days. Um, then uh, one project that's not yet complete and we're working on an estimate is Order of the Moon Road. Um, so that we're going to be meeting with FEMA on Monday. So that'll be my final meeting with FEMA. Um, and the road foreman is going to be participating in all meetings going forward with FEMA. Um, and then projects that are not yet complete and not started, uh, Sanders Circle, Sparrow Farm, and Sodom Pond. What's the uh, the logic behind the groupings in row one and row two? FEMA did that. <laughs> FEMA <laughs> row one is done. Provida, FEMA provided that to us. They yeah. were the ones that grouped the roads yeah. together. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But so row yeah. one is done. Yes. Yeah. Road group one is done. The so row two, that's that's done too, isn't it? I mean, on Fitch no. Road. Guyette Road, Murray Road, Bliss Road? Fitch Road, Guyette Road, and Murray Road, Road have more work to be done. Oh, okay. So you did you did print it out. Well, but I have more online. I forgot to print right. this stuff for you. Please. Um so those aren't quite done. Correct. And then Horn of the Moon's not done. So correct. On Sparrow Farm. Those aren't done. Okay. So some of this is sort of Redundant, no? I mean, Horn of the Moon road damage. I guess Horn of the Moon. Hole. Yeah, it's, it's but, kind whatever. of a mix. Yeah. yeah. Gotcha. Okay. So the next meeting you're attending with so FEMA. So we will, I, we were, I'm going to email FEMA tomorrow and we are going to meet with FEMA on Monday. Okay. Um, That will be my final meeting with FEMA. Yeah. And then then when do they come to me? Once as needed. As, as we needed. keep moving forward and as we have information to review, and okay. we have a new FEMA representative that we're working with as well. But you're meeting um, them on Monday. Correct. Yeah. So we're we met last week as well. Right. Jennifer met with them right. on Thursday. Yeah. So um I had been having weekly meetings with FEMA yeah. with the previous PDMG. Um, but that PDMG retired, um, yeah. program delivery manager. Yeah. Um, he retired on Friday. So we met with him, his replacement on Thursday. Yeah. And Jennifer was in participation of that meeting as well. Um, going forward, and I've spoken with Road Foreman Perry about this. Um, Road Foreman will be participating in the meetings with FEMA going forward because I have intimate, detailed knowledge of storm damage and what happened and had eyes on it from July 11th until now, um, I'm able to field a lot of questions from FEMA um, about specifics regarding the road damage. So going forward, it will be important for Road Foreman Perry to be a part of those meetings so that he can answer those questions yeah. as FEMA asks them. And so um, the meetings with FEMA will be as we make progress on the various projects? Correct. So when we meet Monday, one of the things we will talk about with Evia is the name of our new PDMG. Um, with Evia is 
what the next one is coming out of the gate. So that'll be a conversation Guthrie and I haven't had yet um, about which ones he thinks he's going to be working on next. What do we think is next to be completed? Yeah. Um, so we know the remaining work for Fitch, Guyette, Murray, have photos of that. FEMA should be able, Guthrie's provided a very detailed estimate. We have it to what employee, how many hours, what equipment are they yeah. going to be in, how much gravel are we going to use? So we have all of that information. The photos he took today will go to FEMA tomorrow, and FEMA should hopefully use those photos and just basically that that estimate moves forward. That project okay. kind of considered complete. Okay. They will use those photos to agree or disagree with yeah. the estimated work that we say that we need to do to complete. Um, the next question is going to be what's next going to come? Will right. we finish off Horn? We have some idea of what we're going to finish off on Horn, but it's not fully baked yet. A part of this process is we have to write project narratives. Yeah. Um, the narratives basically, or they call them DDDs, uh, damage, dimension, and description. We're providing detailed information. What happened? What did yeah. we do? How did we fix it? What all did we use to fix it? So I have not managed to write that yet for Horn of the Moon. Is you that know, the last one, the write-up? Mm -hmm. Sparrow Farm, Sander Circle, Sodom Pond. Um, don't want to be too, too complicated. Do you once support get, that with pictures? Once we get the design, they have photos of all the damage already. Oh. That was provided way back yeah. in July um, or August, I think, when we met with them. Um, so that they already have of the damage. Um, once we get the designs for Sandra Circle and Sodom Pond, those will go to FEMA. They will estimate what they think that repair will be. And from what I understand, the projects move forward from there. Okay. Um, I don't know what's required yet because I haven't done one like that in yeah. regards to the project narratives. So they're DDD or project narrative, both named for the same thing. Um, I've so you don't of, know what they expect for the project narrative? I don't know yet. I have not done one like this. Everything okay. we've done, we have detailed information on. Okay. And I'm providing a detailed write-up about it. Okay. I've learned from FEMA how to write them. FEMA will most likely assist in the documentation yeah. of DDDs going okay. forward. Um, that's part of what they do. So if Guthrie's there, Evia can sit with Jen and Guthrie yeah. and yeah. ask questions. Right. She's getting the information she needs to help write that DDD. Gotcha. It is not typical that the applicant writes them all. I've learned from Paul how to write them. Yeah. So I know how to write them now. So and in his words, write beautiful DDDs now. So, so it'd be helpful, I think, though, and I'm sure you've already done this, is you just pick off a project and try to push it as far as you can. I've already done that with every single one I have. That's what I was thinking. Yes. But then... Then you go back and are there some projects that you can complete and be done with them? Like that's, you've already done some. The, that's what, like the pictures today for Gaia, Murray, okay. and Fitch. Fitch. Yeah. All it is is adding gravel. It's not the end of the world. Right. The main thing was you have the option. You've got 30 months to complete it. Okay. So why would we go through a mud season not knowing what the road is going to look like mm -hmm. the next spring? Yeah. Because there's places you've added three, four feet of gravel. There's places yeah. where you've added a little bit. Yeah. There's a lot that can change over a winter and a mud season. So yeah. there was no point in closing them out. And yeah. they you can see base gravel in some of them. Like the yeah. three inch minus is already coming up. They need a minimum of six more inches of gravel. Already. Okay. So there will be some projects that we can take off the list and you'll just keep attacking them as you can but in an organized way so we can get those gone. Some yeah. of them are going to be done, right? Right. Well, and that, we need to keep, we need to get whittle the list down. Still in groups. Yeah. That's well, yeah. Feet. But again, the, the, Sounds like the main three that yeah. are not yet moving right. forward are Sanders Circle, Sparrow Farm, right. Farm and Sodom Pond. I know. So we've already kind of done what you're describing right yeah. now. Yeah. So for example, road group one, um, yeah. that is our biggest project with the yeah. most roads that we had. Yeah. Guthrie and I had a conversation with that one. While he had a little bit, technically he could have done on some of these, he concurred and we discussed that no. it was immaterial yeah. what we needed to do. It was not worth holding that project up. So it was his decision to tell me, just close, tell it's done, yeah. it's complete, move on. Yeah. What yeah. little bit he had left on maybe a couple roads out of that list of roads was just not worth holding the project open. Right. That's why that got complete. So what you're asking for has already been done. That's where we are. Well, I'm just trying to, because you are going to be gone, and we just want to be aware of where we are in the process of these projects. 
and I'm, I'm getting the sense that you're moving it forward, of course, and I just want to be kept in the loop as far as, you know, each project goes, okay, that one's done, that one's done, good, good, yeah. you know, and because it, it, it sounds like it's tedious in some ways. It's you know, documentation, tedious. and you got to get the estimate, blah, blah, blah. Every employee, yeah. The well, it's not. That's, that's, yeah. Well, For the work that has been completed, yeah. you have to have the timesheets, the pay stubs, yeah. the invoices, the canceled check copy. Oh, yeah. So yes, I mean yeah. there's a lot, and all of that information we already have for every dollar that has been spent to date. Yeah, that work's already done. Yeah. So the piece we don't have is we do not have design drawings yet on Sander Circle and Sodom Spawn, Sodom Pond. But that comes from FEMA. No, um, that comes from the two engineers oh, that we okay. hired that you all oh, approved okay. an RFP oh, oh, and was good response. Yeah, yeah, they're going to. Yeah. And then Sparrow Farm will be self-performed. So one question, and again, we will be discussing this with FEMA Monday, is what is next out of the gate? Are we going right. to be finishing Horn of the Moon first? Because from what I've now gathered from FEMA, it doesn't seem like they love this process of estimating what's to be completed. It kind of became a little more work than we expected it to be. So if he's a few weeks out from finishing off Horn, or even a month out, then it's better to just go ahead and get that done. Right. But again... Right. All the timesheets, all the pay stuff, right. everything to date yeah. is already living in a folder yeah. that Jen is going to inherit on our network. Right. So I can't leave it any more done than I already have. Yes, so could you help me understand what the interaction is between our physical work on the ground and approval from FEMA? Do we follow their process and, uh, and submit stuff to them and expect them to approve it, or do we not go ahead and do work until they've said, yes, we're going to reimburse this. We do the work we know needs to be done based on our municipal general roads permit. Yep. And then we submit project narratives that yes. explain what we did, why yep. we did it. They review those. Yes. So far, everything has just been approved that we have submitted. Right. Okay. We haven't had any pushback from them in any way right. so far. Thank you. If you're following that municipal general permit, yeah. that's, that's the, key. the leg to stand on. Yeah. Like right. They can't kick that out from under you. Got it. Thank you. Yeah. Well, it sounds like we're making progress. Hopefully, we keep making it. Sounds like a will. Thank you. Just a tedious process. Mm -hmm. It'd be nice to get that list whittled little down just for the real quote, you know, peace of mind. Okay. Yeah. Can you define you whittle know. down? We, <laughs> we, list, I'm not sure what you mean. Smaller. The list gets smaller. Financially, the list is very heavy. Yeah. Still. Worse than anything we've had yet. Our major combined. projects have yet to be completed. Sander Circle, Sodom yeah, Pond. Yeah, right. mm -hmm. That and Sodom Pond. Those two will cost more than everything else we've done yeah. collectively. Wow. Yeah. And we have to pay for the pay for it up front. And then they reimburse it. That is my understanding. Mm -hmm. That's a big chunk of money. It remains to be seen for Sander Circle, Sodom Pond. When we get those yeah. estimates, or when we get those designs and we send that to FEMA for estimate, my understanding is that FEMA will go ahead and fund projects based oh, really? on that. That's right. what I understand. Again, having been with this project. Because projects are going to be $200,000. Mm -hmm. That's my hand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Keep in mind, we will have to go through bid process with those as well. So, oh, yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Um... The next item is personnel matter probable executive sessions. Discussion on road food staffing. I guess we'll go around there for some. Oh, that's quite funny. Let's go live. You're winning. Do you have an estimate? Here we go. Motion to go in executive session. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, question. I, I was just wondering from the estimate as to when I should come back about the right report, the right trees for other. You told me to come talk about it in the what was that right other what? business session. We're all. Yeah. Oh, let's do you want to go ahead and do that? Right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, we could have done that before. Talk Sorry. about that. Right. What, what are we talking about? The right the trees. The trees. All oh, the trees. Okay. No. So, so yeah, that's. that's okay. Then that, that, I, I can come back. I no, 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 we'll do it right now. Do it right now. Okay. Before. So, were you the one that was? Yeah, so I'm Darcy Coleman Graves. I'm the vice chair for the rec board. Yeah, um, so um, I, I want Paul to look at it. Yeah, so Paul looked at it on Friday with me. And what did he say? Uh, he said, 
taken that we actually marked off an area that we okay. wanted to take down it's similar to what i sent you in that picture where i kind of so what happened is we had some trees that grew onto the softball field that backfield on the rec uh the rec field we'd like to take them down so they're out of field to play they're all most of them are about this size so oh, okay. um yeah. Try and just pull them out with a tractor so we don't have to deal with stump grinding because I don't want any kids landing up. Well, so that was that was a little bit of my concern is when you work on town property, you can't just send anybody over there to work on. Okay. I, I mean, you got you had to look at it, which is the process that we usually employ when we're talking about cutting trees on town property. Okay. Okay. So I'll look at it, it's fine. So the other thing is though so from a liability point of view, we don't have people going there and just cutting trees down willy nilly. That's okay. So that's why I'm here. And that's why I'm here too. I want to talk to you about it. It's like, wait a minute, you know, how big are the trees? And I didn't see the picture. And how many are there? And how are we got to cut them down? There's quite a few trees. Yeah. Uh, like I said, most of them are most of them are sapphires. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Paul suggested just taking them down with a tractor. Yeah. Um, instead of trying to chop them down because he thinks oh. we can get the it's very yeah. marshy back there. Right. It's pretty wet. It's pretty wet. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, and there is, okay, so there is drain pipes out there too, coming out of the school. Yeah, that goes up. One at the moss, yeah, yeah. An So this is way in the back. Yeah, um, not, well, back right, not back left. Yeah. Not where it dumps out. Okay, so you can closer, get in there. It's closer to the actual field. Uh, like the field. Yeah, yes, correct. Okay. Well, who does this work and what's the liability is your question. Well, my question is who's going to do it? And well, if they qualified to do it if the tree falls on the head, you know. But I would think only to do thing. it because I could get it done faster because I have a couple of people that will help me with it. Yeah. Um, but if you guys aren't comfortable with that, then. Um, I don't know. I don't know how big the trees are. You say mostly in the saplings, so you know that's a lot safer than cutting trees down the yeah, day. I mean, the wrong way. there are, I think, three trees that are a little bit bigger. But yeah. When I say a little bit bigger, they're not as big. Uh -huh. Have you seen it? I have not. This is okay. the first I've heard. Right. I've been talking about planting trees there. <laughs> not not there. pulling trees out of the ground. Not there. <laughs> not on my cell phone, but I've got a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think the excavator is going to be going there. If we get our roadside motor over there, we could just pop them. Okay, well, that's up to you. We'll I mean, figure it out. I'd rather have the roads do it. Because it's okay. Do it. We have a choice. Okay. Right. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Okay. Well, no. Can you work it out, Doctor? Yeah. Okay. Sure. Okay. Perfect. Uh, the other question I have is, while Paul was there, he found an ash tree that's right next to the. It's... Um, did he mention it to you? No, I know where it is. Okay. I hung a sign on it. <laughs> I said, "Oh, I can put a screw into that tree. It doesn't matter." <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if we can play it, make a plan to take that one down. I don't know how that works. Yeah. But it is close to the shed that we put in. Also, oh, it's that close to the. Oh, close to the. Yeah. I mean, it's not super close to the road, but yeah, yeah. Close to the shed. It's close the to one the I was talking about was like halfway up the wood barn. So uh, it's probably 20 feet from the shed and it has oh. a nice little angle to it already. So that was, that's a different one than the one I was thinking. All right. Well, all right. That might be a wait for winter when it's frozen. Exactly. Yeah, totally fine. I don't, I'm not worried about okay. it. Okay. The, so the, the, all of them I saw were still in good health over there. So we're good for me yeah, to work with. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And uh, thank you for coming in. I didn't mean to sound snippy about the whole thing, but right. there is kind of a process where you kind of treat the top property. Yeah. yeah. And okay. I, I didn't want to go in there. You know. you know, I didn't know what the whole deal was. It's like, yeah. oh, wait a minute. Yeah, it's one of those things where it just wasn't, we didn't use that field. So yeah. over the over the years, it grew yeah. into the yeah. field. And I had a girl hit the ball out there last year. So I'd rather not have that happen. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. I'll call you. Well, thank you. Right. Thank yeah. you. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Okay, so now you need a motion to go in second thing. No, we don't have a motion. That's for you. You need a motion to do that. No, you do not. Oh, we're in motion. We'll pull out. That's it. That's my promise here. Motion to go into executive session. And the reason we're going into executive yeah. session. So, matter of personnel matters. Personnel matters. Matter. Personnel matters. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'll just pay with you, Sam. Aye. Yeah, I'd be great to have it. Are we recording in? Yes. Okay. Yeah. No action was taken. We're out of executive session. No action was taken. Very good. 8 04 p.m. Correct. I think. Yeah. Okay. We ready to rock and roll? More, more than ready. No, I'm Roll talking on. to them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you are?
You good? Yeah, I'm rolling. If you're, uh, yeah, if you're, are you back in? Yes. yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We're back in the meeting. Yeah. Um, all right. So the next item is discussion on town office staff inclement, inclement weather policy. So there have been many instances in today's my two year anniversary, in my two year tenure with the town where we've had to make decisions to close the office, decide whether it's safe for staff to come to the office. So this is just an attempt. Most towns, um, I got, I sent email the select board all samples I got from VLCT of uh, proposed policy to just get something kind of in writing, um, mm -hmm. documenting when we may determine it's unsafe for staff to come to work because of inclement weather. Um, this is a proposed draft to just at least get something in writing if the select board would like, or you could not, either way. Doesn't matter to me either way. But these decisions are, we just had to make one about a month ago, so. So what's happened in the past if someone misses a day because of the weather, what have they done? Prior to me, I was told it never happened. That was, a re that was a response I got. I don't believe there was any formalized process, so I have no, no idea. No, there wasn't a formal process. I can't answer what was done prior to my being here. So when I had made the decision to close the office, it's treated like the employees have come to work because we've had to make the decision through no fault of anyone's that we've had to close the office. If an employee has determined because of where they may live that it is unsafe for them personally to travel to the office, but the office is still open, then they would need to take leave time for their choice to not come to work because everyone lives in different locations. So yeah. part of the reason this was never in any way formalized or likely even really dealt with before I came here was all of your employees lived in East Montpelier. Yeah. Sometimes so, you get late because of the roads, but mo most of the time they come in. Exactly. They might work a little later because, oh, we got in late. It's a little different now when you have people coming from. Yeah, further away. Further away. And sometimes, I mean, when I just closed the office a month or so ago, when we had that snow come in, the office had no power. So, I mean, the generator was running, but clearly, and trees were falling all over the place if anyone was following it. So there were reasons why I decided before that storm came to close the office and it worked out to be the right decision. The day of the flood, everyone was actively here. I sent everyone home because we realized that we were about to have a major event in the area. It's a decision, there's no hard rule. Jen and I have talked about this, there's no rule. I get regularly, you probably get them too, Steph, as an emergency management director, I get multiple emails a day when a weather event is coming from the Department of Public Safety. Based oh, yeah. on all that information, I decide whether I think it's safe for people to come to work. The reason I made the decision a month ago to close the office was because of the potential for power lines to come down, trees to fall, all the reports I was reading. You're making a judgment call. If the select board would prefer to make that judgment call for the office, that's up to you as well. So if you shut the office the way this reads, it sounds like an employee would still get paid. It correct? is like they came to work, and that is consistent treatment. That has been consistent in my past prior to working here, okay. which was always for hurricanes or tropical cyclone events. Yeah. But that was basically treated like it was a work day. That's yeah. the way VLCT conducts their office as well. But are they still required if they can work remotely to? I, do, I worked when right. we were closed a month ago. I worked the entire time. Right. That but they're not. But office. the employee is not obligated to. I can't. Well, this force says, people this to says it have must initiative to work remotely. This that? says if an employee chooses. If the employee oh. chooses, but we're not oh, talking, okay. we're yeah, not talking about the employee. If the employee chooses, then I guess if we close the office or if the office weather, is closed, they don't have to work. They don't have to. Right. It'd be nice if they did, but they're not obligated. Mm -hmm. That's what it sounds like. It was understood in my past that you had the ability to work remote. If you had power and you had internet, you would do so. Um, I come from a different culture than what I've mm -hmm. been working in here, so you know that's just cultural differences whether people do or don't. Could we put language in if if the office is closed and the employee has the ability to work remotely? Is that something that we could mandate? I don't know how you would mandate it. We don't I have don't anything that's going to. That would be an unenforceable mandate. Yeah. 
There's no way for me to know if someone's actually working mm -hmm. or not. Well, if, it, if they had a report to complete, if they had financials that needed to be submitted. It would be impossible to enforce. Well, how, I mean, you could put some language implies in there that there's a way of enforce. enforcing it right. uh, if they it's voluntarily good. choose not to come in and work at home. Right. Well, we would know that because the office. It's assumed would be, that if you could work. We would well, know that I mean, you would. still, yeah. I have no physical exactly. way to know what someone's right. doing at home. And keep in right. mind, working from home is as efficient as it can be, depending on your internet speed that you have at home. We all know. So yeah. you know, it. You know, it. I mean, you can. I mean, I, this is not something I'm going to be enforcing. So you all can decide what you want to put on here. I mean, how many people have the technological ability to work at home given all the, the systems town, that we use The town here? clerk and town treasurer do. Okay. Yeah, they, most people are, have the ability to work from home. And, and they have the technical, and they have she the works from ability. Home all the time. Yeah, I'm just wondering about you know, signing, logging into Nimric and things like that. You, you can. Yeah. Yeah. The challenge that you have is your internet speed at home, which mm -hmm. is one reason why the treasurer doesn't really work from home very much. She yeah. has slow internet at home. Yeah. So it makes an already slow system to connect to remotely that much slower when you have slow internet at your home. Yeah. I have fiber at home. I'm fiber at home, fiber in the office connecting in. I'm significantly faster. It is really not much different for me working from home than it is being in this office. Yeah. What do you think, Carl? You think we should put a little clause in there if the person has the ability to work from home? They can on I mean, we've, days we've, that we close the office. We're in more of a culture where people are working remotely. They are. Yeah, and most people have the ability to do it. Yeah, even yeah. if the internet speed is slower, you know, it would be nice. At least if they we get could, something done. Right. Yeah, it'd be nice if we could say, not just a pay, just a not just a paid day off. You're expected to work from home. I mean, so obviously we can't. I, I don't. I know, know we can't enforce it. I don't know, know of a way to check to see whether they. No, I don't either. Yeah. There are they are inventing ways to check it. Well, <laughs> <laughs> bread. My suggestion before suppose it's a Tuesday. Yeah. And a financial report was due on Thursday morning at 9 a.m. Mm -hmm. Or or whatever budgetary work we'll needs to be done. Mm -hmm. Or whatever. <laughs> Therefore, the work had to be completed on Wednesday when the office was closed because of a snowstorm, but the yeah. employee had the ability to complete that work. Yeah. Well, Do it's it. obviously if the work is not done because, well, the office is closed, so I didn't work. Well, instead of watching, you know, instead of watching Netflix, Cartoons. you could have worked. <laughs> right. You, you know whether that employee completed the work or not. Of course, that's common sense, but, you know. I'm with you. Yeah, but... And, and we come from a world where if you gotta do your work, you do your work. I'm not gonna watch Netflix when I'm supposed to be working. Yeah. But you may, if you, you can't mandate it, you're saying? No, she's we saying don't you really can't enforce have it. hard deadlines and I, things like you're describing. The okay. culture in the office doesn't really well, align with what you're saying. Yeah, I, I, I think we should attempt to do it. it can, can you put Soft language in language. it would be assumed? What do you think? <laughs> I mean, yeah, you're I know in you're the saying. corporate world working at home where you were. What, what, what's? Um, yeah, I always have the capability to work remotely, so but I what, would. Would we put? Some, would you suggest you put some kind of language in? Um, yeah. To suggest it is assumed. It's assumed that you would treat it yeah. as a workday remotely. Yeah, if they have the capability to connect. Right. Exactly. Given, I think we should throw something in here. Given that this is April twenty second and we're. Maybe unlikely to have a huge snowstorm between now and our next meeting, and maybe we could ask you to put in some new language reflecting that, Jennifer. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. I like that. Yeah, okay. Great. Good for you. And can't hurt. And we're not saying it can't hurt. And if we can't enforce it, oh well. Right. But you know, there are ways coming where you can check an employee's work from home. You can. Well, there are ways right now. I mean, there's yeah, schools, there are ways. There's schools that spy on your lot done. There are. Only, yeah. And there's only chairs they're making now that can read equipment. what your bottom's doing yeah. at work. If the town <laughs> supplies the equipment, uh -huh. but if it's your own private computer, mm -hmm. well, of you're going to get sued so fast. Mm -hmm. you are really yeah, but yes. everybody has to everybody has, everybody has a laptop. Everybody has a laptop. Yeah. Yeah. Well, not everybody, but... The town clerk does, town treasurer does, zoning okay. administrator does, town administrator does. Matter. Oh, absolutely. Okay. All right. So I like Carl's idea mm -hmm. that Jennifer, as our new town administrator, will soon to, tweak soon, this soon, soon to be, be. Soon to be. 
uh, town administrator in training. Was that, that good stuff? Um, yeah, whatever. <laughs> I don't like the word in training. In training, no. Anyway, we're going to In transition. This, we're in transition. Our soon, our soon to be. Okay. She is whatever. So let's, let's, let's add a little language in here. Basketball. Sounds good. No. Okay. Who's the official town administrator now? Oh. So our town administrator, which is now. Our, our new town administrator. Well, there she you even go. has oh. a black card. Yes. Uh, oh, that's dad is probably about okay. Um, <laughs> let's do other business, and then we'll do the okay. warrants, or maybe we'll do the warrants while Carl's talking about other business. Yes. So other business, Paul Erbo. Yes. Longtime East Montpelier resident yeah. and member of the State Ethics Commission contacted me. I don't know if he, uh, and Zoe about a bill that is in the legislature right now. Uh, the bill is, um, it's what, over 50 pages long, I think, and it uh, takes up a lot of things, but... Uh, There's copies of it here. Oh, thank you. Um, the, I don't, I think it's, I mean, when a legislative committee takes up something like this, as probably everybody here knows, then they bring in witnesses, they take testimony, they go through it in detail. I, I don't think we need to do a thumbs up or thumbs down on the bill as a whole, but um, in particular, he was asking for input, input on the uh, statewide uniform code of municipal ethics. and. Uh, we have a code of ethics here at East Montpelier. We, um, you know, shortly after I joined the select board, we strengthened that. And one of my first questions to Paul was, would we be able to keep our strengthened code of ethics? And he said, yes, uh, that's possible under the bill. And uh, I, I think that probably we wouldn't benefit directly from having this, uh, although it wouldn't hurt to get training regularly on municipal ethics um, down the line. But uh, I think the state of Vermont would benefit from having a uniform statewide code of municipal ethics. And uh, I've pr I have a motion drafted that I'll read for you. I'm not wedded to this language, but this is just what I, I put together. Uh, the East Montpelier Select Board supports a uniform statewide code of municipal ethics, including required training for municipal officers. Uh, so long as each municipality may adopt additional ethics or personnel policies, provided that these are not in conflict with the provisions of the statewide code, which is echoing the language in the bill itself. To be quite honest with you, I thought it was legislative overreach. Mm -hmm. I'm against supporting it. Please say more. I just think that it's they've gone. Uh, beyond where if they're working on this kind of stuff the legislature has got the priorities backwards we have way bigger problems than this but regardless we may not disagree with that point but what about this document like i said i think it's overreach first any aspects of it or just just the municipal part of it the, the what i think you're municipal part oh, okay. so each town, if they want to have, like we do, their own ethics, I have no problem with that. But the state getting involved, anything I've seen the state get involved, they screwed up, including statewide school. I'll get out of my soapbox. <laughs> I like that it um, offers to provide free advisory and training services in municipalities. Mm. That sounds like the language says that it's not ma mandatory. Mm. But trainings would be available. Right. So we want. Right. Yeah. So yeah. It sounds like a good thing. And we've seen situations in the past where towns have been dysfunctional for yeah. various reasons. Um, I don't know if that situation in Williamstown over a decade ago where the town treasurer refused to share the books with the select board right. would qualify as some sort of ethical violation, but it, because the town treasurer at the time was elected, a fellow elected officer, the select board had no direct tools and perhaps having a state ethics commission come in, hold an investigation and make some findings, I mean, they, don't, they don't have disciplinary 
teeth to what they do either, but at least they would have the possibility of shining more of a spotlight on it. So it just gives more tools available to good governance at the local level, is, is my thought. Tools, and it specifically says that this bill does not actually give the Ethics Commission, the State Ethics Commission, it says that it will not give it any authority to investigate municipal complaints or oversee municipalities at all. So that sounds like there's a separation between, it doesn't sound like it will be um, micromanaging municipalities, so to speak. Is that what you understand from that? Yeah, yeah. Oh, thank you. So, um, can we apply this to the Supreme Court? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I, I think it's, uh, and this is something that Ella Chapin, our representative, yeah. has reached out to a number of she was the one that reached out and yeah, said, yeah, "What do you what, what do you think of this?" Yeah. Yeah. And she was she was glad that we we're going to take it up tonight. Yeah. I'll second your motion. Okay. What's the motion? Do you want me to read it again? Yeah. Um, the East Montpelier Select Board supports a uniform statewide code of municipal ethics, including required training for municipal officers, so long as each municipality may adopt additional ethics or personnel policies, provided that these are not in conflict with the provisions of the statewide code. All right. And you second? Mm -hmm. And any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 And all those against? No. So we have one opposed and four affirmative. Aye. Affirmative. Okay. Do you want um, me to email this to you? That'd be great. Okay. Thank you. Yep. And okay. So what else do we have? The warrants are going around. We went around. Town administrator, oh, that's all done, okay. And I signed that, and we're not signing the the um, winter or inclement weather policy, because we're gonna re -quick that, tweak that. Um, so what do we have for the town administrator report? Do we have anything, we have some permits, right? You have the permit report for your review? Yeah, two new houses. Cool. It's been busy. And then, wow, that's a lot. <laughs> for you all to discuss your December meeting dates. The first meeting technically falls on a holiday. So. Oh. Uh, okay, so meeting. June third. What falls on which falls on holiday? Uh, September. Labor Day. Labor Day. Labor Day. Oh. We always have September a conference with that. Seems like. Well, so Labor Day is the first Monday. Six, in we September. have a regular <laughs> meeting. It always falls on a holiday. The Congress designed it that way. Yeah. There's conflict with yeah. our meetings. Yeah. Okay, so it's a yeah, that works for me to move on. So just one meeting in August, is that going to be all right? It's going to be great. <laughs> now, listen, I'm waiting right here. We're talking about business, oh, well, not what you want to do. I a second meeting in August. No, you can have a second meeting in August. I just yeah, we usually do. So it'd be the 19th. If we right? don't have a second meeting in August, that will mean that I might miss less meetings. Might miss what? Fewer meetings. You do tend to have one meeting usually in August. You okay. tend to lose. As long as it works, that's fine with me. If, if we need it, we'll. Sure. Yeah. We yeah. might have to have a special meeting town anyway town. about this town. Sure. Garage. Or, no, not the garage, but the employee situation. No, can. You know, sure. And we got to get together. Sure. You know, okay. decide what we're going to do. Yeah. Why is there a special meeting? Yeah. Okay. Right. So we're doing it on the 9th and the 23rd? Of, of September. Mm -hmm. Of September, yeah. Yep. Sounds good. And we can change it. Cause that's pretty far ahead, so. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're going to be on vacation, you said? Possibly. 
Okay. In August? Yes. Okay. All right. So Carl will probably do the minutes then. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll do the minutes. I'll try to give the 25 bucks. The okay. minutes taker position was recently reposted to the website. Yeah. No takers? There were not before. Okay. Anything else? No? Motion to adjourn. We need, we need a second. If, if, oh, we have if, a second. <laughs> All in favor, please say aye. No wait, further discussion. Wait, wait, who seconded it? You. Uh, well, sure. Well, okay. He made the motion. <laughs> and you seconded it. So did Carl. No, no, no. I, Carl I stands aside. <laughs> Carl is deferring to your wishes. Yeah. Yeah. One second. Yeah. Recording stopped.